This fly has to tread carefully. If it strikes one hair, it can carry on feeding, but a timer has been set. A second strike in less than 20 seconds and the fly is doomed. An electrical impulse is triggered and the leaf snaps shut in just a fraction of a second. The tips lock together like prison bars. If the fly is very big or very small, it may just manage to escape. But most are trapped and die. Ten days later, the trap reopens. All that remains is a husk. The plant has finished its meal and resets itself for its next. Okay, hi guys. Did you enjoy the video? That video was uh, a Venus fly trap eating a fly. Basically, that video sums up what I'm going to talk about today, which is um, plant growth and movement responses. Basically, a plant they they grow or respond to a unidirectional response, which is called a tropism. Now, a positive tropism is um, they're moving towards the stimulus, or a negative tropism is moving away from it. Basically, there are three three tropism that we will be talking today, which is phototropism, gravitropism, and thigmotropism. So in our video today, I will only focus on two um, types of tropism, which is phototropism and gravitropism. Okay, let's start. The first tropism we'll be studying is phototropism. Phototropism is the movement of plants against or with light stimulus. Shoots display positive phototropism, while roots display negative phototropism. Plant scientists have discovered that plants have membrane receptors to respond to wavelengths of light called photoreceptors. They respond to blue wavelengths of light, which initiates the signal induction pathway, which leads to the elongation and bending of cells. As displayed in page 486 of your matter textbook, blue light wavelengths are absorbed by the pigment portion of the photoreceptor called FOD. When they absorb blue light wavelengths, the FOD changes shape and transfers a phosphate molecule from ATP to the, pro to the protein portion of the photoreceptors. The phosphorylated photoreceptor then triggers an induction pathway leading to the entry of oxygen, which eventually leads to the bending of cell. Beautiful, isn't it? This is a well. It's a plant. Basically, in our next, uh, in my next chapter, I will be talking about gravitropism, which is how the plants can defy gravity and how they can move with gravity. Basically, as you see here, this is the stem. Oh, no. Yeah, this is the shoot. The shoot. As you can see, it's uh, moving up. So when it's moving up, it's defying gravity. So it's a negative gravitropism. Well, as you can see, well, you can't see, but in the roots, it's uh, moving down with gravity, which is positive gravi gra gravitropism. I will tell you more after this. Gravitropism, as I have said before, is the effect of gravity on plant growth. Charles and Francis Darwin discovered that if the root caps are removed, roots no longer displayed responsiveness to gravity. Root caps contain specialized cells called statolites, which are found within organelles called amyloplasts. They settle at the bottom of the cell and put pressure on the organelles, thus signaling the downward direction of the roots. 
So I guess that's all from me. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask me. But for now, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.